Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines and glad you are joining us today as we continue our ongoing conversation, bringing you uh, perspectives from technical experts across the energy industry and uh, look forward to having a great conversation with you today as we dive into uh, a, another space, uh, actually talking about centrifugal pumps and the technology and concepts behind uh, those innovations and have a special guest with us today that is going to be ready to take your questions uh, no matter how technical or uh, or basic uh, because we're here to learn and here to uh, have a great conversation with you. So thanks for joining us. Speaking of conversation, we want to go ahead and bring in Shelby Dumain to talk about how you can do that and actually join us and get your questions in for our guest today. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. Uh, yeah, so I think we have a really great episode uh, today planned for our viewers and, and got some um, really cool, cool videos to show as well. And so if you have any questions about uh, the show at any point throughout the, the episode, uh, the easiest way to let us know those questions is simply by commenting. Uh, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, I am here um, in the comment section the entire time looking at the great conversation um, I love seeing also where you're from. So just looking at it, I see Chicago, uh, uh, Mexico, Mississippi, Abu Dhabi, um, all, Ukraine. I see all kinds of really great um, um, places that people are tuning in from. So let, let us know uh, right now. You can test out the comment section where you're, where you're viewing from. Uh, we love to see that. And then again, as we go through the show and uh, talk about this really great um, uh, content about centrifugal pumps, you can throw in all of your questions there. And at the end, we will do a live Q&A with our expert um, using your questions. Uh, so that's how you can, can get in touch with us during the show. I know after shows, sometimes people have more questions. They want to dive a little bit deeper. Or uh, maybe even if they have a question for us, uh, an idea for a future episode, something that they're kind of curious and want to hear more about. Uh, so there's a few different ways you can get in contact with us uh, after the show. And the first is by emailing us. So you can reach out. Uh, the email is on screen now. It's uh, social media at NOV.com. So you can find us that way and, and just shoot us a quick message there. Uh, or uh, again, longtime viewers of the show will know this is my favorite way. You can give us a call. Uh, so you can uh, call us, leave us a voicemail. Um, I always like to say you can stay anonymous or if you want to let us know your name and and uh, uh, where you're tuning in from, maybe even where you work, you can do so as well and, and we'll feature you on a future show. Uh, but that line is also on the screen. It's country code plus one, three, four, six, two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. So we'd love to hear from you, give us a ring and, uh, and we'll give you a shout out as well on the show. Um, other than that, so I know usually uh, this is the part of the show where we do our Rig Geek segment and, and we ask a trivia question of the audience. Um, but we're going to get into the show, right into the show today, actually. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm here right now um, at one of our Houston lo facility locations for the EFRAC showcase. So I actually went um, out on the lot today uh, with a lot of our really cool technology that we have um, kind of on display. And I was able to capture some really great video of the very pumps we're going to be talking about today. Um, got to see them in person. It was really awesome. And so we're going to show that. So our Rig Geeks, even though we're not doing a trivia question for you today, um, we did get that really cool uh, video for you. So I still want to do something for our Rig Geeks out there. Um, but like I said, if you have a question about any of the content uh, you hear or see today on the show, go ahead and, and comment those below. Great. All right. So and uh, yeah, we'll we'll certainly mm -hmm. be getting uh, more conversation around uh, EFRAC a little bit later today on the Ask Us. So I'll actually be joining you on location there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that'll be be a great, uh, great conversation. Great, Mark. Well, yeah. thanks for uh, for getting us up to speed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead. And as Shelby said, we'll dive into our conversation today. So we are talking about some new advancements in uh, centrifugal pump technology. And to help guide us along that conversation, we're going to go ahead and ask in uh, Jamie Broad. He is the product line manager uh, for uh, some of the uh, centrifugal pumps that we have here at NOV uh, with Mission. So, hey, Jinx, for joining us and let us know where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm actually up in Shreveport, Louisiana. So unfortunately uh, I wasn't able to make it down to uh, Houston today, but here we are. 
Well, through the magic of uh, modern technology, we, we, we're in the, in the same place, essentially. So uh, that's good. Yeah, I remember uh, I went to school in East Texas, so uh, very fond of uh, quick jumps from Longview to Shreveport and back. So uh, that is, uh, that is good, good to hear. Well, uh, glad you're here on the, on the show. So we're going we're gonna to jump in and, uh, and maybe we'll, we'll just kind of start, start at ground level for, for those that may be new to this space. So we're talking about trivial pumps. And, and as Shelby said, we'll be seeing some of uh, some video of, of uh, some of those pumps later on. But for those that aren't familiar, um, help us understand, you know, what, what is a centrifugal pump and, and why, why do we have it and where is it used uh, in, in the uh, overall landscape um, of uh, rig operations? Well, it's, you'd be surprised that centrifugal pumps, I mean, anywhere from oil and gas, uh, from our side of it, we'll see them on the rig side from just pushing, just drilling mud, to water transfer on the the rig locations uh, and then you move into the the cement and then on the frack side with the the heart of the blenders is the the centrifugal pump but you'd be really amazed at the the actual applications that this pump line is used in inside the oil and gas and outside right right okay so so i know that uh you know specifically the, some of the the pump technology we're talking about today comes from the uh the the line of mission pumps so uh for those that that are familiar that's that's a, a almost kind of like a, a common common name but uh for those that aren't aren't familiar could you maybe give us a little background uh on the the mission line of uh of pump technology Yes, the, the mission line has been around since the 1920s, actually founded in Houston by a Sharp family. And then finally in the 80s, uh, National Oil picked it up. But as you see in the, the video, the XP line uh, actually came up into the 80s. We started out with a hard iron version and then moved into some harder metals into our high chrome. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, so, and I, I feel that those have certainly been been tried and true and, and time tested and uh, continue to 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 serve uh, customers so uh, maybe yeah we'll we'll dive into some of the uh, the core that we have for today or, or one of the core topics so uh, wanted to maybe start out talking about the uh, maybe the ultimate XP pump I know that's one that uh, you're You've got top of mind uh, nowadays, so so help us understand what what is that particular pump, and uh, and and help us kind of walk through that. Yes, uh, from the way the from the beginning in it with our hard iron version, we we finally progressed into a high chrome, which is a harder material. And over the years, the the frack jobs have gotten harder, more sand. So mm -hmm. the life of the pumps has actually shortened down dramatically. So we actually had to sit down and try to figure out a new metallurgy to evolve into. And that's where we came up with the actual ultimate material. And the easiest way to understand that is to look at it from the hardness scale. Uh, the high chrome, or sorry, we'll start with the, the hard iron. You're looking from a 300 to a 350 for now hardness. Then you move up to the mid grade, which is the high chrome, and you move up to 600 to 650 for now hardness. And now we've had to increase it to where we're around 740 to 750. And it's a fine line of becoming too brittle, but from everything we've worked with, this metal has uh, gone above and beyond anything I would expect it from the right. beginning when we started moving it. Right, and so so when you're talking about uh, really those those ranges, uh, that's a a testament and a reflection really of a of a lot of both time in research and development as well as uh, in the field talking to customers trying to figure out like you said that that ideal uh, kind of that ideal sweet spot of having a, a metal that really works for yeah the changes in the landscape which as you already said it has really seen a Real, almost like an exponential increase in in uh, sand content that's being pumped through these. Yeah, so that's what I mean. the The XP line has been around for I mean we're looking at thirty plus years. So the ultimate XP takes the the best technology that we've had. The XP line, I mean, it's been the standard, uh, the industry standard for since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we've left the same footprint. So cosmetically, you can't really tell a difference. And that's what some of our customers have asked that. Because 
just from looking at the pump side by side, you really can't tell anything. But when you start seeing the life of the, the pumps of what they're getting now compared to the other material, it's just, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe we can, can dive into that, uh, you know, kind of talking about the, the dual stage XP and the ultimate XP. So, uh, you know, let's, let's maybe talk through what, what are the, what are the key differences between the two and, and really kind of what, what caused us to kind of move in this this direction to to actually have these two or the the these uh, two offerings specifically? Well, the ultimate XP we had to with the single footprint. Everybody's used to having this one pump, so we increased the life of it, and we were moving forward just from a standpoint from pumping dollars just from a return on investment from the actual end users in the field. And then with the dual stage, that is a completely new monster. That okay. pump, this is the pump of the future. This mm -hmm. is something we've actually been working on for about eight years. Uh, we've had it out in the field now running for about a year. And it is, we run the standard XP at about 1400 RPMs. That is a standard across most jobs in the U S and Canada with the ult, or with the dual stage XP, you run it at 900 to 950 RPMs. Mm -hmm. Just by slowing it down, you get 75% longer life just out of the material, just from right. that aspect of it. Right. And then you have, if you can see in the pictures, there's a, a second casing on the back of it. That's what we call a diffuser case. And for mo people that are familiar with cars, it's like a turbo. It helps boost the fluid going into the, the second casing and out the discharge. So a lot more efficient. The suction pressure needed to operate the pumps without cavitation is a lot lower. Mm. So it's a very efficient pump. Phenomenal. I'm very happy to see it. So, so you, you, you said that uh, that it helps reduce cavitation. So can you talk a little bit about that? Why, why, is, that, why is that an important concept? Uh, cavitation, for a lot of people who don't understand it, it's air bubbles. Mm -hmm. Do you get air bubbles entrapped into the fluid and you have all these little explosions on the surface of the material? And you would be surprised at how fast those little explosions will eat away the metal. Mm, so okay. getting rid of those, it, you do not have the, the wear that you would normally see. So right. it just makes it last long. Right, and right. they pumped it a lot. Better. Mm. So, so I mean that that I think that's really um, really helpful to get some of that insight. Are there some some additional? That's a I'm, I, I know that folks always love to to kind of hear uh, you know critical dimensions and dims things like that. Do you have any kind of uh, additional items that you could share with with folks that are kind of curious as to? uh more on the uh the dual stage as as well as the the ultimate well if you look at from a uh, just the footprint standpoint they it starts out with the original frame and the the discharge casing is the exact same one we've had on it for years all we did was we had the diffuser case so the overall mounting standpoint is exactly the same so the only thing is you will have to shorten your drive lines because it's 22 inches long but your center points on your shaft and everything are exactly the same. So that helps with all the hundreds of units that have been in the field. There's not a whole lot of retrofit to it. Right. Right. So I know that we have the uh, both the, the ultimate and the dual stage uh, on location today. There's a, uh, an EFRAC. Uh, event that that NOV is is hosting, and um, again, I think Shelby mentioned that earlier that that these are are on uh, on location, uh, which which I think these are also part of uh, of that new new offering. Is that right? That is correct. So with the EFRAC blender, uh, Rolagon has been working on that for quite a while now, and they incorporated the dual stage onto that blender. And it is absolutely unbelievable. Mm. Uh, a one the the dual stage pumps 
are a lot different than our, the standard centrifugal pumps that are in the market because majority of the pumps, they hit a level of flow rate and pressures and usually they'll plateau out and then you'll start dropping off at a point. This does not do it. So right. the main limitation with this pump is what you're feeding into it. But with this blender design, I mean, I, I'm really interested to see what this can do in the field because honestly, I was asked to to do the, the pump of the future and they wanted a pump that could do 165 barrels a minute. And it's like, we already have it. It's here. It's just, we have to figure out, we have to build the unit around it to make sure. It work. The yeah, the, 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 the future is here. The future is now. <laughs> yes, that is exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. So I, I know that we've got, uh, I've just kind of been glancing over at some of the, uh, the, the comments here. So if you have a question for uh, Jamie Broad, our expert in the hot seat today uh, uh, regarding a centrifugal pump technology or uh, any questions specifically on the dual stage uh, or Ultimate XP uh, centrifugal pump, go ahead and put your question in, whether you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, and we'll try to get your question answered uh, by Jamie in our conversation today. Uh, and again, today being a, a special episode as, as we actually have this technology out on location at uh, NOV's EFRAC uh, event. Um, so Jamie, I know that you and the, the team are, are constantly, you know, working on, um, you know, really, like you said, listening and developing, uh, solutions that can meet the needs of today and, and tomorrow. And so I'm, I'm not going to ask you to, to open up your, 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 your secret book of plans, but, but as you kind of continue to look at, uh, really the, the future of, of, pump technology and centrifugal pumps, um, do you do you continue to see uh, things like the adoption of the, the dual stage uh, centrifugal pump really being a, kind of a, a standard moving forward or, or how, do you, how do you see that? It will be. Uh, I, within the next five years, I think that the, the jobs are really going to change. So I think with, with the dual stage pump, I think we moved in the right direction. Uh, and we're still, I mean, to be honest, we're in the infancy of that pump of what it's capable of as well, because I still have not teamed it up 100% with our high-end materials. So, and there's some other things we could add to it. So it's still in its beginnings as well. Mm. Okay. No, that's that's really good. Good perspective. Um, looks like we've actually got some questions already uh, for you, Jamie. So if you're ready to to rapid fire away, we'll go ahead and bring Shelby Domain back in to uh, get some of those questions. I know you're you're just ready, <laughs> you're ready to go. So uh, that's that's what I like to see. So all right, Shelby, what what do we have? Absolutely. So uh, this first question comes from uh, Himanth on LinkedIn, and he's wondering uh, if you could talk a little bit more about erosion and, and maybe how these pumps kind of um, prevent that or 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 how erosion plays into it. Uh, if you're looking at it from the dual stage standpoint, uh, the easiest way to, to go at it is at the, the slower pressures or the slower RPMs that you're turning it, the abrasives that you're pumping are not, there's not as much energy there hitting the impeller and some of the other pieces. So just from that standpoint, it extends the life of it. And then from the, the ultimate material, we want to look at that. Is from the hardness standpoint, we did a few things with the, the metallurgy on it. So it's mm -hmm. more resilient to cavitation. It takes it a little better mm -hmm. than any other material that we've offered in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And, um, and this next question, I, we, we were getting a lot about kind of, uh, you know, specifics. How does it account for this? How does how do the pumps account for that? Um, and so this next one comes from Jose on LinkedIn. And he's wondering, um, are there any sensors that account for uh, vibrations? Uh, they're actually, we're incorporating that now. We're uh, rolling on myself. Uh, there's a technology we have called GoConnect. And mm -hmm. we, with the, the EFRAC blender that's there on location, it is completely decked out with any sensor we have from vibration to temperature, uh, RPMs, you name it, we can track it. So they mm -hmm. are starting to incorporate that now, and it's also on the rig side as well. Okay. 
And I can't remember, Michael, you might be able to correct me. I think we, have we done an episode on Go Connect or is it that I'm just that big of a fan of Go Connect in general? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I think you're a, a major fan for sure, which is great. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think we did uh, talk about that in a previous yeah. previous episode, but I'm sure that that won't be, won't be the last time for sure. That's right. Yeah. So if, if you want to find out more, you can kind of look at um, on YouTube is a great place to go and, and you can see all of our some of our past episodes um, and learn more about that. Um, and then so we got a few more questions. Uh, I think this this next one, Thomas from LinkedIn was wondering, um, is the diffuser case made from cast or forged? Uh, it's actually it's poured one piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it's we, we're making it out of a 22 percent chrome alloy. So we're looking at a 600 to a 650 Brunel hardness, mm -hmm. uh, but it is one solid piece. And that is the hardest part building of the entire pump was trying to get that correct. Oh, interesting. Well, we like to ask, you know, but, but the difficult parts, <laughs> I think. Uh, so this next one, um, where was it? Here we go. Uh, so Hamanth again on LinkedIn was wondering, what are, uh, what are the common processes which you utilized in typical pumps? And uh, where maybe can these not be used, or uh, what's you know a really great case for them? Oh man, uh, it's a big question. It's a big I, I, one. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. When I was at Tox and Tropical Pumps, I was mm -hmm. we use them in every application from processing foods. They pump potatoes. Uh, I work with companies that do dredging offshore. Uh, uh, one company I deal with dredges off the coast of Florida to move sand. Uh, cement companies that pour highways. Uh, it's really, <sighs> the industry is so vast and there's so much opportunity out there. It's, I mean, it's just how much you want to go for. So, mm -hmm. so it sounds like, yeah, like you said, there's, there's a, a, a broad range of, of applications. I would, I would suspect mm -hmm. that it also, you, you have a lot of conversations regarding the type of material that's trying to be transported and, and some other considerations, but, but it's, but it sounds like from an industrial application, whether it's oil and gas or, or food and beverage or, or anything in between that, that there's mm -hmm. uh, at least many opportunities to use these types of pumps. Mm -hmm. That's it. Hey, we have pumps in Napa Valley for irrigation on the wineries. Oh, wow. That sounds like a great trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't made that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to say, I, I think, Michael, I think I might maybe need to uh, yeah. be spent there on right. location yeah. for, for that. <laughs> um, all right. So this next question, um, we got, actually got a couple about maybe the cost effectiveness, alternatives. And I kind of wanted to, to more ask about, you know, how do these pumps compare to maybe other ones on the market? Mm, from the, the discharge standpoint, um, take the, the ultimate pump to, to start. It's it's a proven pump. The impeller design, we use a semi-open impeller design. So easiest way to understand it, it's self-cleaning. So you can continue to load it with sand and fluid or any kind of abrasives that you want to. And they pump it a lot easier than a lot of our competitors out there that are running the closed vein impellers. Mm. Okay. So, and then that's Go. the easiest way to understand that one. Yeah. So, and maybe just if you can talk about that. So, uh, a uh, you said it was a, a semi-open design versus a, a closed design. So, what what is that for those that aren't aren't totally familiar with the concepts? Um, I'm trying to. If you look at a fan on the, the front of your motor of your car, there's nothing in between the veins of the, the fan blade itself. But with the closed vein impeller, they take that, that impeller and they put two plates on each side of it. So that makes it a closed vein. Mm -hmm. So there's openings inside the two plates. And it, as it's trying to generate the, the fluid to the outside of the casings, it clogs up and they can bog down and you have to have more horsepower to turn it. So with what we do, it's just not efficient, especially with the frack jobs now that are going with higher sand counts and higher pressures needed with all the additives. Uh, our impeller design is a whole lot more efficient than anything else on the market. No, that's, that's really good. Yeah, and it looks like uh, there's some more, man. These questions are 
are rolling in. Oh, yeah. Um, so this next one, uh, let me get the name. I always like to call them out. Um, uh, well, it's, it came from LinkedIn anyway. So uh, they're asking about the foundation. So is this something that would need to be reinforced for these pumps or um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe this is also we could you could talk to a little bit about uh, actually installing these um, these pumps, maybe some some uh, parts that are needed for the foundation or, or whatnot. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, you broke up. I couldn't hear the, the first part of that yeah, question. I think the question was asking if, if there's mm -hmm. someone that wants to, let's say, have uh, uh, the uh, the dual swapped out from, from the ultimate or, or, or likewise, are there any specific uh, considerations that need to get in to account for uh, the foundation where these units are going to be put in or, or is it pretty much uh, kind of a... a hot swap like there's no reinforce special reinforcement or anything like that when they want to install these no the special reinforcement no uh the only thing you have to look at if it's a rollagon blender rollagon spec these into their units uh about five years ago so if it's a rollagon unit more than likely you'll be able to put it in extremely easy uh with some of the other manufacturers you really just have to watch on the piping and the the space that you have available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, but well, the, the other one, the ultimate pump is usually a plug and play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think I think uh, I, and uh, thank you, Michael, for for rewording that question for me sure. as well. I'm going to say um, so. This next one, and I think this might be our last one, uh, just just because of time. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about um, what storage would look like for this if someone had to preserve it in a warehouse? Um, maybe just any information you have on that. Oh, it's very simple. I mean, if you have one that needs to stay on the shelf for any extended period of time, all you have to do is go out and rotate the shaft every three to four months just for the mechanical seal purposes, just so that they don't stick together. And besides that, that's it. Super simple. Man, and, and simple it is. It seems like you've made it in answering uh, all of these questions. I really appreciate uh, all of the uh, active uh, participation and Q&A that, that we had from all the viewers. I, I know that, uh, as, as always, we, we usually run out of time before we're able to get to all of, uh, of the questions, but I really appreciate uh, the, the feedback and, uh, and participation. And, and Jamie, certainly appreciate you jumping in the hot seat uh, with us here today, talking about uh, uh, centrifugal pumps and the the uh, the ultimate and, and certainly the dual stage as well. Really, really interesting and insightful. So thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. And I uh, wanna thank all of you for joining us on today's episode. If there was a question that you had that we weren't able to get to today or if you are watching the replay of today and wanted to get a question uh, over to Jamie, feel free to drop us a line in our social media email. And that's just, just simply social at NOV.com. And we'll be sure to connect you with, uh, with Jamie or someone on their team. So we appreciate you joining us and we'll see you here at 1.30 PM today as we uh, broadcast live from uh, a special frack uh, showcase that's happening today uh, here at NLV. And uh, we'll be uh, live with Mahana to bring you the latest uh, insights on market updates and trends, as well as some insight from a special guest as we talk about the EFRAC uh, space and uh, advancements in that area and what NLV is doing as a, as a, a participant there. So as always, we appreciate you watching and listening and we'll talk to you next time.